but the more i mean I, i'm just disclosure i work for a huge company that's um on the high performance computing machine learning team and i can't talk about the company um but i will say this the machine learning the applications for machine learning that are happening that are being created by the team we support you know the models and everything and we don't actually write those is astounding i mean there's machine learning everywhere it's in everything now so you know and i i, I i've got two stories here so one of them is the story my grandpa told me uh, when he took me to go see his huge computer that had punch card to put in data into it. He gave me a punch card and sent me on my way. When I was very young, I know that's a lot, that, was, that was a long time. He said, Rob, don't learn programming. It's not going to be enough. Programming is going to be in everything. What you need to do is find an industry that, that you like and you want to get involved with and then learn programming for that industry. And at the time, he was very prophetic. I mean, you know, he was he was very you know, insightful. He was, he was doing, he was an accountant for a school district and absolutely brilliant. He used to actually like to make, uh, get rich quick schemes and he would write them all down and put them on paper and then he would set them aside. He would never do any of them. Uh, I don't know why it was just kind of a fun thing. He also was in world war two. Amazing human being. I actually really miss him. Uh, he's my namesake. And, um, so he said, so that, that advice applies today. So today it's, don't just learn development and coding. That's in everything, right? There's programming and development and everything, whether you're systems operations, cybersecurity, healthcare, uh, racing, I'm here in NASCAR, there's tons of it. I mean, just, just programming the mill machines is a huge job. And we have some of the people in the stream actually who do that for a living. And, um, you know, and, and, then, and then the machine learning models. And a big chunk of that is going to be machine learning. So, so, in fact, it's getting to the point where I'm going to predict, and I don't imagine this as being very futuristic. People out there probably already would guess this. It's getting to the point where the, the machine learning models and the development, creating a machine learning model is a thousand times more, if, if not way more than that, more accurate and effective than anything that could be invented in mathematically through the brilliantest, most brilliant minds out there who to do to could write an algorithm for that. And I don't have a story about that. So I actually was, uh, I think it was a NASCAR person. We were having a, a meetup uh, back when I had skill sack and there were a bunch of people that were just shooting the breeze on a Friday night. It was always really fun to do that. And he, he shared a story, I believe. Uh, I hope I'm getting the story right. I, I cannot, I can't recall it perfectly. I'm sorry. Um, but I get the gist of it. So the gist was that this, they talked about a factory and that had a particular cam. Actually, this, this might be, I may, I may be mixing this up with a blog. I should probably go research it. I might be mixing it up with a blog that I read. But the, the point is this, is that there's two ways to solve a solution, right? There is the analytical approach, which is let's come at this with as much, you know, algorithmic thinking and math as we can to kind of predict how something's going to work in kind of a mathematical model. Uh, and, you know, we see this all the time in physics and astronomy and stuff where people, including, you know, uh, most recent one I heard was when they figured out how to map the residual energy on the surface of a black hole and they could actually detect uh, data, uh, matter that was going into the black hole because it would, it, believe it or not, it would actually create a signature on the front of the, on the top. It was a huge thing. It was like a mathematical thing. And, and then you have, then you have nature. So the reason that, you know, our, our biological genome and everything's got full of viruses and stuff is because nature just figures out what works. Whatever survives wins. Whatever fits wins. Whatever, you know, adapts wins. And that's machine learning. That's exactly what machine learning is. And he used a specific example of a cam shaft, whether it's apocryphal or fictional or what, I can't remember. But I love this example, so I'm going to share it. He said, and this is why I think machine learning is going to take over everything. Um, so machine learning, so this was before machine learning was a thing, at least you know mainstream the way it is now. And th this cam, so this factory that had been producing whatever this thing was, widgets, um, had been doing it forever, and they had created a cam. You know what a cam is? It's like a camshaft, right? A cam is is like a, it's like a, you know, it's like a, a, a rod, but it has different thicknesses at different places. And then there's, it's usually tied to a piston or something so that it, it, it causes things to move in very delicately different ways, right? And this, this particular cam and this machine had been handcrafted like years and years ago 
by machinists to do exactly what they needed. This is, you know, old time factory kind of thing. And the thing broke. And so the whole factory was done. They couldn't do anything because that central cam had been broken. And so they, they hired the best possible minds that they could get to come fix it. And they kept trying to, you know, design them and, and come up with the proportions and everything because nobody knew exactly what the other one was. Nobody thought to take the, to stop the system, take the cam out and take a, a, you know, an exact duplicate of its dimensions so that they had a backup. Nobody did that. So they had to replace it. But they couldn't figure out how to get all the pieces to move exactly in the way that was needed. So, and, and they, uh, seriously, they brought all of these official analytical mathematicians with the best minds and they couldn't do it. And ultimately, they, they, they started looking to the engineers and to the more of the boots on the ground kind of engineers, uh, the practical people, that was, as academia would call them, which is an insult in academia to call somebody practical. You have theoretical physics and you have practical physics, right? And the theoretical physicists, think they both need each other and they, they banter all the time. But deep down, the theoretical people think they're better than the practical people. The practical people are just blowing stuff up and learning lessons. But you know what? The practical people are the ones that I like. Because why? Because they're creating solutions to problems. And yeah, they get blown up every once in a while, but they figured out. And that's exactly how they fixed this cam issue. They started with a, a cam they knew wouldn't work. And then they shaved a little bit off. And then they did that. And then they shaved a little bit more off. And then they shaved a little bit more off. And then they shaved a little bit more off. It was a painstaking process, but at least they, it, they, re, they were able to repair the factory by doing that. That is exactly what machine learning does. It's also what nature does. If something doesn't quite work, this, if it doesn't work, it gets thrown out. The stuff that does work, it adapts, right? And, and you, you, you sort of make... I actually feel like, because I'm not a genius, I, I am not a brilliant... I've, I've met brilliant coders. I feel like my method of programming is a lot like this. Because what I'll do is I'll start with a test or something I want to happen and it doesn't work. And I can't see the answer in front of me. It's just too complex a problem. So I'll shave it down. I'll get down to that one thing and I'll keep adapting the code until it works. And then I'll, and then I'll make sure the code's clean, of course, you know, and then I'll make another, and then I break it down in another problem into another smaller problem, another problem. Pretty soon the whole thing's done. And I have a whole Zettelkasten management tool or something like that, just written in bash that I can port to go that I don't have to th overly think about because it was very, organically created it was made by adjustments as we go so i i think it's a really great approach to to creating solutions in general does this work what change it's also a great way to figure out what broke you know because the whole pd thing start out with the control and then slowly change stuff until we recreate the problem um there I mean, that idea of just tweaking something a little bit and but as, as i understand machine learning and i'm not very deeply deep into it as i understand it that's exactly what machine learning is is it, it finds the paths that are that are the most common that are and therefore it's able to adapt and so if it looks like an ear it's going to say it's an ear you give it you give it you give it enough pictures of an ear it's going to get an ear right every time is it going to get it right sometimes yeah but eventually it's going to get it so right so often that it can make an ear anywhere that will fit into any other any other head and they've proven it over and over again with all the with all the, you know, the image um, hacks that have been out there that are not even real people. So why do you care? Because, because if, if the future is machine learning, if machine learning models are just going to destroy the, the effectiveness of any possible brilliance when it comes to like writing code that would actually be algorithmic and, and, and can be applied to so many random different things from, from genetics to, to mathematics, to every, you know, everything that, really there's really no sense there's really no sense in figuring out how to code all that complex stuff when you can throw a model at it long enough that can beat uh dendy in mid lane and dota 2 every single time without a question because it knows what to do there was no algorithm trained to do that and it's undefeatable so so whether it be gaming or anything so i think what i'm trying to say is you know if you think you don't want to be involved in machine learning because you know that's not your thing uh and you also want to be a developer I still think there's going to be a lot of space for development uh, for people to be able to, you know, to patch together these models. You don't have to be the, the person who's creating the, the model, um, but it doesn't hurt. So pay attention. You know, I, I, I think that you should be aware of it because I, I really truly believe that, God, even within five years, it's just going to be all the major work out there in, in, in development in software development and stuff like that. It's almost all going to be making models and, applying those models to the infrastructure and 
applying them to the infrastructure takes many forms, but right now cloud native and Kubernetes is the way to do that. And and I see it every day. That's exactly what we're doing. We're 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 building uh, you know Kubernetes clusters for high performance machine learning, and and then they're starting to put their models in there. They've been putting them in the older batch system for for from now. But 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 the model is the same for you in terms of what you need to learn. I think I really think if you, I think people people you're either going to be gluing th gluing models together, or you're going to be making the models ultimately at the end of the day. That there will be you know electrical engineering and other things like that. There's going to be there's always going to be you know the more traditional coding coding jobs, but I I really believe that they're going to diminish, and particularly the high paying ones are going to go to the people who can either create models, uh, or can adapt the models and make them work within a certain environment, because that's what that's what the people with money want, because it's it's by far the most efficient way to get stuff done, and and the number of different model applications that are out there now have just keep proving it every day, so, you know next time. You hear about data science and machine learning. Maybe take some time to, to get your head around it and don't, you know, balk at it. Uh, it's also, I mean, if you're a gamer, it's like this, at the core of game engines. This is, machine learning is a major, major part of gaming because bots, you know, all that other stuff that has to be there to make it realistic. So that's all I have to say about this video. Just don't discount it. You know, if you're going to learn development, great. But you should probably also learn how am I going to support the machine learning models or how am I going to create the machine modeling models? Because it's all going to be about machine learning in five years.